Rev up your engines. Johnny Ringo asks, what's the scariest car you ever worked on? Okay, well, I'd have to say the scariest car I ever worked on was the first generation Toyota Prius. And here's why. That had a hybrid battery inside, and it had 288 volts in it. To give you an idea, to work on them, you got to have ohm meters and voltmeters like this foo. You can't use cheap stuff. You got to use expensive stuff. But realize that 288 volts can kill you. Most cars, of course, are just 12 volts. 12 volts is very low power. You can stick your tongue on a positive terminal and your finger on a negative, and nothing's going to happen to you. It wouldn't hurt you at all in a 12 volt system. But with 288 volts, that can kill you. Hey, your house has 120 volts. That can kill you too. Well, imagine 288 volts. It can easily kill you. If you want to work on those cars, you have to buy special electrician's gloves. There are two layers. First, there's an inner layer that you put over your hands. Then there's an outer layer. And you have to check the inner layer every time you work on them. You got to blow them up. And then if you hold them and you see them leaking out somewhere, that means there's a pinhole somewhere. Well, electricity can go through that pinhole and kill you. So every time you work on the car, you got to put on these fancy gloves, check them to make sure that they're not leaking, and then be very careful that you don't short any positive to ground when you're messing with 288 volts. Believe me, the first time I worked on one of those things, it was a very scary experience. And from what I've read, some of these uh, responders, they see a vehicle that's an electric car, hybrid car like a Prius, and and they know it's got 288 volts, they're going to be very leery about trying to reach in and rescue people if something's shorted outside and they grab something metal and they get 288 volts. So really, that's the scariest thing and I don't really mess around with them much. I'll work on the other parts of the cars, but I tend to stray away from the 288 volt systems on those things because that's deadly voltage. It can kill you. Dylan Vaughn says, Scotty, I saw the video where you said not to use additives in your gas. What about the Gum Out Complete Fuel System Cleaner? It's a good fuel system cleaner. But that said, most people never need it. If you buy a used car and it's a piece of junk, nobody ever changed the filter, the oil was never changed, and the engine's all carboned up inside, sure, a cleaner can help it somewhat. Or if you live in a place where they have really crappy gas, like the guys tell me in Cuba and like in Pakistan, a lot of their gas is absolute crap, and you got to put additives in it because the gas burns so poorly it clogs up the engines. But here in the United States, I got three well, two Toyotas and a Lexus sitting in a driveway. I mean, they work perfectly fine. But, I mean, if you buy a used car, you don't know. Not a bad idea, but normally you never need to put cleaner in a car. The additives that you need are generally in the gas that you buy, if you buy quality gasoline. Junior Pinedo says, Scotty, should I get a CVT or manual 2018 Civic Coupe as a base model? I live in New York City. I was thinking CVT. Rethink. Get a standard. So the one problem with Hondas have always been their automatic transmissions were somewhat weak. Those CVT transmissions are much more complex than the automatics. And the problem with Honda is they're always trying to make their own transmissions, which is kind of a mistake. Most manufacturers these days don't even make their own transmissions. They buy them from somebody else, like the Chrysler Rams and their vans now. They're using ASIN Japanese transmissions. Uh, a lot of the Volvos are ASIN Japanese transmissions. Allison is an Indiana company, and they make truck transmissions for all kinds of truck companies. Honda makes their own, and they're kind of weak. I would definitely go with a manual on that. It's going to last a lot longer. Legend Belcher says, What's your opinion on the V6 Ford Mustang 2003 era? Well, you know, I like the way the cars look, but I don't like the V6 engine. They're kind of a weak engine. They don't hold up as long as the V8s. They certainly don't have the power that the V8s had. I'm not a real fan of the six, the V6s in those. I like the V8s. I mean, to me, a Mustang is a rumble of a V8 and a six. It's like, meh. You know, if you're a slower driver and you like the way the car looks and drives, go right ahead and get one. But I like the V8s in those things. Bruce Pata. Scotty, I just went through a body of water and it looks like there's steam coming out of the radiator. The car action seems fine, but the steam has me worried. You probably don't have to worry. Only one of two things can happen. One, you go through water. Water gets on the radiator. The radiator dissipates heat. So if you got a bunch of water on a radiator, it'll eventually steam up from the heat and then it'll eventually just evaporate off and it'll stop doing it. That's normal. That'll happen. But Let's say you're up north somewhere where the water's really cold and your car was really hot. If you do go through a bunch of water, ice cold water 
hitting the plastic or the metal on a radiator can make old brittle ones crack and start to leak. So if you find out days later you're still getting steam, it's damaged it and you want to have it pressure tested for leaks and stuff. But if it goes away, that just happens from the water getting on the radiator and then it's got to come off somehow and the hot radiator will just steam it off. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.